grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father in Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his spirit of truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do nothing. That means absolutely nothing. You can't lift a finger without God. So with that being said, let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 34. We'll read uh, verses 1 through 10. And we'll skip down to verses 17 through 19. So it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want. To them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Skipping down to verse 17 now. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on in, family. I'm glad to be sitting down with you all reading about what thus said the Lord. And quite honestly, you know, this is my favorite part of the day. When we can sit down here and read about what thus said the Lord and share some light on the holy word of God. All right. So with that being said, we're going to deal with part two. Of this series that the Holy Spirit got us working on. And uh, we're going to deal with what the Lord Jesus Christ sent his spirit and inspired us to put together. And that is breaking down Satan's strongholds. This is part two of this series. And what we're going to deal with this time is how the Lord is our refuge in this wicked world. All right. So all of us go through something. You know, I, I can't sit up here and act like we don't go through things just because uh, uh, you a you a man or a woman of God? That don't mean you ain't gonna go through nothing. We all go through things. We all human beings that come short of, of the glory of God. We all human beings that get tried and tested. But what makes us different from everybody else is the knowledge that we have. We know that God is gonna deliver, like we just read in this song. So whatever it is we going through, whatever obstacles that we face with, whatever traumatic experiences that we had in the past, we got to cast all our count upon God. I don't care who you are. That's what we need to be doing. And this is what we about to take a look at today. And so uh, let's get over here to uh, Romans 5, because the question may be asked, well, why do we go through all of this? Why do we got to suffer like this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the first human being, he introduced death into the creation. So we're going to read this. This is why we have so much trouble. Because our first, the, our father, Adam, he listened to his wife, Eve. They got some bad information from Satan. And they got us all cut off. And the Lord said, in a day that you eat of that tree, you're going to surely die. A day to the Lord is a thousand years. All right. So this is why we die. And uh, uh, death was introduced into creation because we disobeyed God. So we got various forms of disease. We got murder out here. All of this stuff happens because we disobey God or well, Adam. He listened to that evil one or he got that information from C uh, uh, from Satan. 
All right. Which in turn, he really went through his wife and got to him. But anyway, Satan used his wife, Eve. But let's see what let's see how this all uh, came about upon us. It says, wherefore, this is Romans five. I'm sorry. Romans five in verse 12. It says, wherefore, is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death comes in various forms. People slowly die. Death happens at, <clears throat> at an instant. Excuse me. Death happens at an instant. You can, I mean, this is what happens. This is what Adam opened up the door to when he disobeyed God. All right. So since Adam opened up the door to these things, <clears throat> excuse me, since he opened up the door to these things, this is what we are faced with. But God has given us some help and some comfort throughout all of the chaos that's happening in the world. We got we can find comfort and refuge in him. So once again, it says, wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So death is passing upon every last one of us. Because every last one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. Now, the good news is we can be redeemed from death if we trust in Jesus Christ. If we believe in his blood. And get baptized and repent from our sins. All right. So now let's go and take a look and see what Job said concerning this. <clears throat> let's go over here to uh, Job 14. Job 14. And let's take a look at verse 1. Job going to let us know over here. It says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So us human beings, our time is short on this planet. And it's full of trouble. It says he cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. So our time is very short here, people. This is why we need to be using our free will to serve God. Let's stop serving the flesh. Because if you serve the flesh, you're not able to you you will not be able to please God. You can't please God and you trying to please yourself at the same time. Because your desires they're going to clash so we need to be setting our affection on heavenly things and not on things on this earth that's gonna pass away and see like i said yesterday what satan tries to do or what he does he makes sin look good because he rewards it right away right on the spot but have you ever thought to ask yourself well man why why is these things happening like this that's because satan only got a short time to live so he's trying to make you hurry up and rush and do everything right away, right away, because he only got a short time. So don't fall into that, family. God said that we will live forever if we believe in him. God ain't no liar. This is true. So we want to make sure we found worthy of God's salvation when he appears. All right. So now let's go and take a look at this, because Job said, man, that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So now let's just go and take a look at this. Let's go and see what our forefather Jacob said about this when he was brought before Pharaoh, because even he experienced it, too. And God called him a prince. He said, as a prince, has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. That's what Israel means. Let me just show you this. This is the same Jacob that wrestled with an angel. Let me just show you. And this is this man saying this. Let me just show you this. Uh, Genesis 32. And let's take a look at verse. Um, let's look at verse 27, because this is when uh, uh, Jacob, our forefather, the father of the children of Israel, he was wrestling with an angel. And let's see what the angel asked him. It said, and he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. So that's what the name Israel means. As a prince has you has thou power with God and with men. So God changed Jacob's name to his name ultimately. Because this is God's name. This name came from heaven. So anyway, this man who had his name changed, even let's see what he said about his days upon earth. Let's take a look at Genesis 47 and let's read verse seven. It said, and Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, how old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, 
The days of my year of the years of my pilgrimage are in hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been. Jacob said, I've been on this earth for 130 years and my days been few and full of evil. So being born into this, this world just comes with this evil just comes with the territory. This is why I just cannot understand how a person who is in the world is living without God. Or living without acknowledging the creator. Because it's him that's going to provide us peace and protection. You need him. So once again, he says, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. Because back in the days, they was living to be 950 years, 930 years. Methuselah was 969 years old. Do you know how much stuff you can acquire? As far as knowledge and information and wisdom within 900 years of being on this planet, that's a lot. A lot of people know a lot right now at 60, 70 years old. Imagine 10 times that living on the earth. Come on now. The experience that's there. Oh, man. Could you imagine some of the things that those people saw? So once again, let's go and take a look at this because I'm, me, I'm bringing this up because, yes, evil is in the world. However, God has left us his instruction on how to be safe and what we need to do. So let me just show you something here. Let's go over here to uh, Psalms 9. Psalms 9. And let's take a look at verse. Uh, uh, what is that? Verse 9, I believe that is. Let me see. Psalms 9 and 9. Yep. It says the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. So when you're in trouble and even when you're not in trouble, you need to be seeking God. This is how we break down those strongholds. Satan don't like when you draw closer to God. But this is what we need to start doing. This is how we eliminate that spirit of depression. We got to get rid of that doubt. Trust in what the word is saying. Everything that we read in this Bible, believe it. It says, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Ain't nobody ever that was seeking God with a whole and pure heart ever been forsaken. God said that he would never let nobody that trusted in him ever be put to shame. All right. So this is the truth. Let me show you something else on this subject. And then we're going to move on. Let's go over here to uh, Proverbs 18, I believe it is. Proverbs 18 and verse 10. This is something that we need to remember. That's why these devils, they don't like you saying Jesus because that name Jesus got power. Watch this. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's why you got to call on the name of the Lord. Whoever call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever you are, you calling on the Lord to help you with whatever it is. Watch how he show up. It's not a matter of will he show up. It's how he's going to show up because God always show up for his great namesake. This is something that we also have to remember. All right. So now let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and look at this. Because we got to always believe the truth. And like Jesus said over here in John 17 and 17, which I'm about to flash on the screen right now. Give me one second while I turn over here. John 17 and 17. Now, this is why, you know, I'm a huge promoter of the word of God. Because the word of God is true. This ain't no gimmick. This is something that has become a lifestyle. We adopted the, the, the way of living this way uh, uh, that God is instructing us. This is a way of, this is a way of living now. It says sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So this word, we have adopted this into our lifestyle. Because if you believe in a lie, you will die. You will die for believing a lie. Simple as that. Lies come from Satan. So now let me just show you this. Because he is the author of all lies. But let me show you this. This is when he got kicked out. Let's go to Revelation 12. Revelations 12 and verse 7, because Satan is down here on the earth wreaking havoc right now on the earth. 
This is why it's so important for us to believe what the scriptures is saying. Revelation 7 <clears throat> and verse 7. Let's see how Satan the devil got kicked out. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. So obviously there's some, it's some furniture moving in heaven, right? But let's see who prevailed. It said, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. So Michael and his angels, they got down on Satan and tossed him out. So guess what? We still Michael the archangel is defending his people. He's defending God's people. Ain't nobody going to war with him and going to win. It said, and prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Satan ain't powerful. Uh, than, he ain't more powerful than God and his angels. He can't do nothing with him. It said, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Let's see what he did, people. What did he do? Which deceiveth the whole world. Satan lied to everybody. He deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. See, so the ones that followed after Satan, they got cast out with them. And this is why we have to be careful of these lying spirits because they're trying to deceive you to destroy you because they're looking for something to eat. All right? They they kill you. They, that's all they that's that's Satan's main job is to kill, steal, and to destroy. As a matter of fact, let's go and take a look at this parable in Mark 4. Let's have a look at this. Mark 4. And let's read this over here, because the minute you get the word, hold on to it, family, because Satan is going to be coming to try to take that word up out of you. That's what this parable of the sword is about. So let's have a look at this in Mark 4. Mark 4 in verse 1, it says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sword to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. So in this parable that Jesus is explaining, he said that, that there went out a parable to sow. I mean, uh, there went out a sower to sow the seed, which is the word. But. These files, they came and devoured it up. Let's see who these files are. Let's just get right to the point. Let's take a look at verse 13. See, this is why Satan don't want you to believe the word because the word is medicine. The word will heal you. If you believe everything that this Bible is telling you, it will heal you. It will actually change you as a human being. This is why I take these scriptures serious and I suggest that you do too. It says, and he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So Jesus said, if you don't understand this one, how are you going to understand any of the other ones? He said, this is simple. So let's see. The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. How many times... Have you been talking to someone on the street? You didn't bumped into somebody. You telling them about the word. And here comes somebody else that don't know nothing about what y'all even talking about. And they add in their two cents in. And now all of a sudden, the person is questioning on whether or not what to believe. How many times has that happened? How many times have you didn't talk to somebody and they joyful about the word? Then they go back and tell it to their friends and family members. They tell them, man, you didn't join the cult and you this and you that. Now, all of a sudden, they can't deal with the truth no more because they can't take the persecution from their family and friends. Look, this right here, the Lord already told us he came to bring a sword. It's going to set mother against father and father-in-law against mother-in-law. Everybody going to be up in arms about what thus said the Lord. That's what's happening. Because the word will separate you. People going to think you strange for keeping God's word. So what though? Do not seek to please no man. 
All right. We can find a lot of safety in the word of God. All right. If you just trust in the word, you will be fine. Let's go and take a look at something else. We got to trust and put this into action, too. God ain't giving us all of these instructions just so we can know it. We got to apply it. So let's see what Jesus said over here in John 10. John 10 and 10. It says the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is Satan and his ministers. This is this is the main objective. No matter what color you are, they are coming to steal, kill and to destroy. So anything that is stealing your peace, anything that's killing you on the inside as a human being, watch out for that person. Anything or whatever it is that's causing this because Satan is somewhere around. Satan do not like peace and harmony. He will destroy that. It said the thief cometh not his main objective, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But what is Jesus's mission? It's the total opposite of what Satan's is. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. So we receive eternal life or immortality through believing that Jesus Christ has died for our sins. How do we show that we believe that when we go and get baptized? Now we come up out the water, a new creature walking in the newness of life. We're not doing the same things that we used to do. We got a new mindset, a new way of thinking. So forget about whoever don't agree with your godly lifestyle. You pleasing God. Let's go and take a look at something else now. Let's go over here to uh, Proverbs 17. Because we attacking that spirit of depression and all of these things that Satan got set up. We attacking that this week. Oh, yeah. We honed in on it, too. We got some scriptures for that behind. Let's take a look at this. So, uh, Proverbs 17 and verse 22. It says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So when you happy, it's like medicine. You good, you feeling strong, but a broken spirit drives the bones. When you weak and depressed, you ain't got no strength. You don't want to go outside. You don't want to be around nobody. You don't want to take no calls. You depressed. It feel like you're in a dark place. Satan is stealing your joy. Don't let him do that because you know what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You go back and take a look at that in Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So be happy about whatever you're going through, knowing that that's an opportunity for God, the father to be glorified. So come on up out of this depression in the name of Jesus Christ. Get that spirit on up out of here. We got this word. Let's take a look and see what else uh, he said over here. Let's continue walking this precept down. Proverbs 15 and verse 13. It says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. So when you happy. Your whole personality change. A merry heart does this. The word, it, it will build up your heart. Let's see what else he said. It said, but sorrow of the heart, the, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So a lot of people are sorrowful and down and out. And especially around this time, because people feel like they family members uh, uh, or they everybody getting together for these bogus holidays and, you know, it's not it's only like that for one day out of the year or a couple days whenever y'all get together. It's like a bad high, you know, getting together on these bogus holidays because don't nobody else, don't nobody really talk to nobody uh, throughout the year like that, really, for the most part. But I don't know. A lot of families are dysfunctional, but we can bring it all back together with the word of God. Our family take a couple shots. But you know what? All we need is a couple shots to bring it back to life. All right. So let's go and take a look at something else. Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12 and verse 25. Let's see what this says here. It says heaviness in the heart of man maketh this stoop. So when you sad, you down and out, you don't want to do nothing. You don't got the strength and energy to do nothing. However, it said, but a good word maketh it glad. Why you think we read the scriptures every day? This is our strength. It don't matter what I'm going through. I don't care what's happening. This right here, I revert back to the scriptures and everything is okay. Because of the way I'm thinking. This is what we need to adopt. We need to adopt a godly way of thinking. We need to adopt a godly perspective. Let's show you something else. Because just like King David said, if it had not been for the 
a word of the Lord, I had almost fainted in the land of the living. Thank God for his mercy and his promises. And we all go through things. So with that being said, listen, if you've experienced tra traumatic experiences and you have been brought through that, that was God showing you his mercy. Look at what he can do. Don't minimize that. If you're going through something right now, understand that God will deliver you. You got to have faith. Have faith in God. Don't get depressed. Call on the name of the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's see this. Proverbs 25 and 25 is a cold as cold waters to a thirsty soul. So is good news from a far country. Where did this Bible come from? Didn't Peter say holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost? We read heavily information. We got some information that came from heaven. So this should make us joyful and glad. This is what gives us strength. Do you understand that? We ain't worried about nothing. Keep walking in the boldness and in the faith of the Lord, because this is our confidence. Like it said over here in uh, uh, Proverbs 14 and 26. It also said over there in Proverbs 13, uh, uh, Proverbs 3 and 26. It says in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his ch children shall have a place of refuge. You see that? That's Proverbs 14 and 26. So when you fear in God, that's your place of refuge. Keep it that way. Let's go and take a look at something else. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And let's have a look at verse 50. Well, no, 49. Psalms 119 and verse 49. It says, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. So there has to be some type of evidence or something to show that God will deliver you. In order for you to hope in it because you've seen something or you believe something. It's your faith, people. It says, this is my comfort in my affliction for thy word have quickened me. I can't tell you how many times I've been feeling down and out. Sometimes I just be feeling down and out because of so much stuff that I know. Some of the things that I didn't been through. Some of the things that I do go through. But then when I turn back to the word, it's like it just... Pfft, Chase everything away. Look at this. Look at what else King David said over here in verse 28. He said, my soul melted for heaviness. Feel like you'd be feeling weak sometimes. He says, strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Strength comes from God, family. Do you understand that? Let's go and take a look at verse 114 now. We got to get up out of this dark place that we in. Let the word of God rule our heart. Let's see what he said right here. He said, thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. So it's like a refuge. It's a sanctuary for us. His word. Understand that. God is a safe place for us. You got to believe this family. You know it's true. Y'all wouldn't keep tuning in if y'all if y'all was hearing me lie to y'all. You know this is the truth. We reading the scriptures. The Lord is our hiding place. Okay? This is why we need to go be calling on him. We stay in a, a abiding in this hiding place. Let's go and take a look at this over here. Because we're gonna wrap this up pretty shortly. These series uh lessons, we 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 don't wanna uh put too much because we gotta break it up. It's just too much to deal with in one day. And we're gonna attack this spirit of depression this week. We own that. It says verse 13. Uh, Psalms 27 and verse 13, I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. King David said, I would have fainted. I would have gave up, passed out unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You don't got to wait to die to see good days, family. We can do it now. Please understand that it says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Got to have patience and wait. It said, and be of good courage. Don't be weak minded because the Lord ain't gave us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It said, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. And too many of us are impatient. We don't like to wait, but this is what's necessary. You got to wait for God. It said he's going to strengthen your heart. Everything going to be all right. Let's take a look at this. Let's see what else we need to do. 
Psalms 32, verse 10. That's why you in good company if you're not a wicked person. It said, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. So when you trust in the Lord, God will give you mercy. It's going to compass you about. See what else he said. Be glad in the Lord. What? Be glad in the Lord? Yeah. When those trials and tribulations come, you got to be happy. Be glad because that's an opportunity to glorify the father. So stop thinking everything that you're going through is a bad thing. That's another opportunity to glorify the father. It said, be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy. All ye that are upright in heart. So when you know you're doing the right thing, be glad, be happy, rejoice, he's saying. We can't be walking around here sad and down and out and depressed, knowing that you got eternal life coming if you do this thing right. Come on, we got one shot at this, and this is right now. Let's get it right now. Come on up out of that dark dungeon of, of depression. Get on up out of there. Don't you know God got more power than Satan? He came to free the captives. And this is what our job is as a body, of, as the body of Christ. We got to help one another. And I don't get into that. I don't put no uh, uh, boasting in no flesh. It, God's people is whoever believe in him. You, you got faith in Jesus Christ. You guys people and you mind too. We family. Automatically off the top. Let's go and take a look at something else. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians one. Second Corinthians one. And verse three. Now, this is something that we really need to be practicing. We need to we need to really work on this with each other. All right. And here's why. Let's see what it says. It says, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. So if we're going to receive any comfort it's coming from the father in Jesus Christ, the father of all mercies. He's the original source of it. It said, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So that would be unfair for me to get comforted from God and then not go out and give you all comfort. That would be unfair. This is our job as a servant of God to be comforting one another, letting everybody know it's going to be okay. Put the sin away. Stop doing things to get your head cracked by God. Stop that. That's comforting. Because if you didn't have that, you'll be going crazy, losing your mind. All right. So let's take a look at this one last place on this subject, because like I said, we're going to keep these series short so that we can be able to uh, uh, keep it straight, sh straight to the point. And this is what we're going to deal with. All right. For the rest of this week, Lord willing, until tomorrow when we come through, I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, we'll see. So let's see. Romans 15 and verse one. Let's start here. 15 and one. It says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. That's why I have no problem talking with you all, giving out my phone number, giving you all my email address to contact me because we fulfilling this right here. We fulfilling this. We creating a community right now. I know what the world been doing. I even know what some of these people in some of these so-called uh, Bible study uh, uh, churches been doing. And guess what? Hey, they can do their own thing, do their own thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to follow after what thus said the Lord, because everybody that's saying that they doing this, they not really doing it. And I'm not here to point the finger or judge nobody because I ain't better than nobody. But one thing that I do. Stand on, I stand on actually applying the word of God. And when you start doing that, a lot of people ain't going to like you. But I don't care. I'm not here to please nobody. So once again, we got to bear the we got to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. That's why I have no time taking the time out to hear what's going on with you all. Because I be going through it, too. <laughs> we all go through something. It says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So we got to look out for one another. Stop being selfish. It's not just about you. It says, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Guess what? When Pilate was asking the Jews, who did you want to let, let go? They said, release Barabbas. 
somebody that started a riot and committed a murder in the riot, free him and crucify Jesus, a just man. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. This is a wicked world. So Jesus Christ died for us. The reproaches that we were supposed to be reproached with, that fell on Jesus Christ. He paid the price. He was our scapegoat. It said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The scriptures is providing us hope, family. You can't give up. Keep reading. Believe what you read. Don't let these things slip. Verse 13, it says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believe in what? This is why there is no reason to think about or even consider suicide. Hey, we're going to die one day regardless. We're going to either die. If we don't live until the Lord come back, we're going to die. That's a, that's a fact. I'm not trying to speed that process up. I don't care how bad it gets. Look at what God said. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God has given us peace and hope and believe in his word, family. We can't go wrong with his word. All right. So that's part two of this breaking down Satan's stronghold series. And that was the Lord is our refuge in this wicked world. So uh, let's continue on with the mission statement. Let's go back. So that's Psalms 32. Psalms 32. And we're going to let it rest right after this. Psalms 32. And let's take a look at uh, verse. Psalms 32. Let's have a look at verse 5. Psalms 32 and 5. And it reads, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. So when we sin against God, hey, let's, let's confess our sins. Let's acknowledge our sins and confess our sins. It says, I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins. So when we confess our sins, Jesus Christ is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins. So with that being said, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you all and read what thus saith the Lord. I pray that this information is helpful. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, humbly asking a father for him to forgive us all of our sins. May he create within us a heart that's going to serve him perfectly according to his will all of the days of our life so that we can be found worthy of his salvation and that first resurrection. May the Lord God break, break down any strongholds, any cords of afflictions that Satan has us bound up in, in the mighty name of Jesus. May any of us that's listening to this program now or later, may God send his word and cast out those spirits of sicknesses and devils and diseases that's plaguing us. May he send his word and strengthen us and build us back up in the mighty name of Jesus. So with that being said, I'm humbly asking the Father to send his Holy Spirit. May it rest mightily upon us and our loved ones as we continue to do what's right in the name of Jesus. So Lord willing, tomorrow we'll be back tomorrow with a live topic at, uh, at about 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time on the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, Lord willing, I'll see you all then. I love you all so much, and until next time, peace in Jesus' name.